Hi, good Tuesday afternoon to you. Welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. How y'all? So, uh, yeah, Tuesday afternoon. You know what an afternoon shave means, right? Working a night shift tonight. That's okay. Working a night shift tonight. Off a couple of nights, supposedly. A couple of days anyway. Got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun couple of days. But all right. No big deal there, just the way it goes. It's kind of cloudy outside, muggy today, but so far it hadn't rained any. I went by the, uh, did some running around today, Agent 007 and I did some running around, and and uh, I stopped by the cigar store and picked up some cigars because I was out. I hadn't been able to get to the store for a while, so I've been smoking uh, some cigars I pick up from the Walgreens. Which are not bad. It's called Blender's Gold, I think. And they're not bad, but they're not Maduro's. So, anyway, I picked up some uh, more like what I normally smoke. So, uh, so Tobacco Tuesday, we'll use the shave stick today because I like that. A little Aqua Velvet Musk because I like that. I'm going to use the Smog 1305 because I really like that. And as for a razor today, we're going to use this one right here. This is a B1, Schick B1. And I had it shine up all nice and shiny. It's silver plated, so it shines up really nice. But I kind of like it with a patina on it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm sure I'll shine it up again one of these days. But right now, we're going to do it with a uh, patina. Now, I haven't uh, cleaned up the injector part of it and got it going and all that kind of stuff. So I still hand load blades in it. Not real complicated to, uh, to do. Now, with the B1, there's a little bit different angle than with some of the, you know, the other razors after they got going but uh even then still shaves real well it's not hard to find the angle i mean come on it's shaving razor to razor to blade to blade and uh but it is a little bit different from shaving with like an e or a g or any of the others that uh, came along afterwards i haven't shaved with a c i did have an a at one time and i remember it being a lot like this but uh somehow or the other my appears to have disappeared over the years. Quite likely I sold it, passed it along, something, traded it for something, and don't remember it. Happens all the time. But uh, so I'm not real sure. So we're going to get us a little bit of soap going here from the tobacco shave stick. Got that wonderful tobacco scent, that big old bucket of German goodness, I like to call it. But it's a uh, definitely a more more floral scent. It is not a tobacco leaf scent, like some people have said. I always get a kick out of that. Yeah, it smells like going to my favorite cigar store. <laughs> it smells like you're nuts. What it smells like, that's what you think. Maybe going to your local flower shop. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But anyway, whatever you want to describe it, it's a big old bucket of German goodness. Anyway, go shake that brush out a little bit. You know, get our good old boar brush here going and it's just not hard at all to get the tobacco to start doing its thing now it was pointed out by sir flash that uh when i did my all british shave or my majority british shave the other day that i should have been drinking tea instead of coffee and that was an oversight on my part i don't know where that came from i should have but uh, I should have fired up some Earl Grey. And uh, he was saying that Earl Grey was a little too posh for him. Well, you know, Earl Grey I get here comes in a tea bag. And it's Bigelow. But it's a mass market type thing. And I'm sure it's not as fancy or as good or sophisticated or whatever word you want to use. As what uh, folks would actually have in England or whatever. But I do enjoy some Earl Grey. I like hot tea. So for the next British shave, which will be coming up here, believe it or not, in a few days, because it'll be time to get the uh, Mitchell's wool fat out again. So we'll make that a British style shave, much as we can. And uh, I'll be sure instead of having some tea, that I'll ha I mean having coffee, that I'll have some tea for you. Why not? I like tea. All right. So speaking of drinking, today's coffee, it's uh, actually just the Walmart brand. Walmart. I hate Walmart, but 
can't stay away from Walmart, can you? I can't. But anyway, so it's just a Walmart, a really dark, I think it's espresso blend, a French roast. That's what they call it, French roast. But that's what we're having for coffee today. So here we go, the V1. And this is a really neat razor. The, it was a repeater. So the head would turn sideways and you would operate the mechanism in the bottom and it would shove a new blade in out of a magazine that's in the handle. And I know a lot of people actually have these working and and they, uh, come on now, there it goes. They have them working and they're able to inject a blade at a time. And maybe one of these days I'll get down to doing that. Maybe not, who knows. But when you shave with one, you gotta kinda find the angle. It is a little bit different than finding an angle on a more modern vintage razor. Yes, I have vintage, vintage, vintage razors, then I have vintage, vintage razors, and then I have, you know, modern vintage razors, and yada, yada, whatever. But it is a little bit different from some of the, especially from the newfangled stuff. But it does an excellent job, no matter how you look at it. Easy to rinse out. The head doesn't get all clogged up like it looks like it would. Looks like it would to me anyway. And when I shave with an injector, one of these like this or whatever, I'm going to try to add a little more water to my uh, lather so that it does flow a little bit better through the head. I find that's a good little thing to do. And if you're using one of the models that took the uh, twin blades, you really have to watch there because the twin blades definitely clog up easy. You have to rinse a lot with a twin blade. Now the upside of that is that the twins shave very, very close, very easy. So it's well worth a little bit of extra time to uh, wash the head out a little more often, in my opinion. I don't think I have to say in my opinion that much. Everybody knows that everything here is in, in my opinion. Of course, everybody also knows my theory on my opinion. You know, there's the fuzzy way and the wrong way. There you go. Okay, we go back for pass number two. Now, we could have used the brush scuttle and had a nice warm pass this time, but with a face, face lather and a uh, shave stick, I don't know. I just don't use it much because you can't. I mean, when you when you face lather on a soap, you can load the brush and then you put it in the scuttle while you're, uh, you know, doing your prep stuff. And then I'm gonna add a little more water to this. And then you have nice warm couple of passes of lather. But uh, face lather and a shave stick, you don't really have that. I guess you could take the stick and load the brush off the stick, but I don't know. To me, that's kind of a I don't know what word to use. Odd. Let's use odd. That's a good word. All right. Here we go to cross the grain. Now there's absolutely no reason that one of these older razors doesn't do just as good a job as the newer stuff. Even going across the grain here, once you find the angle. There's nothing to it. And it's not hard to find the angle. It's shaving, remember? Technique. But once you get used to finding the angles on razors, your technique will automatically adjust as your shaving has been my, uh, what I found, is that it automatically adjusts. And you end up with a really nice shave from whatever you're shaving with. As long as you have a sharp blade and it's held in a manner that can be manipulated, you'll be good. Beautiful shave, I can tell you. This is uh, over a day's worth of growth. It's not two days, but it's at least a day and a half. It gives the, the old B1 here a little something to work on, and it's doing a really, really good job of working on it. Back this way under the old neck here. All right, get this rinsed off. I told my sister I was going to go on a rant about this uh, grocery pickup stuff at the stores. He was telling I was telling her I need to do a little grocery shopping, and the cupboard was a little bare, and she was telling me I needed to 
use the online app and order my groceries and then just go pick them up. How silly is that? So here's the deal about that. Why I don't think it's a very good idea and why I don't use it. I don't like the self-checkouts either, by the way. I think we've discussed that before. So if you're calling in and you're ordering your groceries and they're filling your groceries and everybody starts doing that, there's not going to be any need to stock groceries on shelves, so you're not going to need people to work grocery shelf shopping. Stocking. Just like with the uh, self-checkouts, you don't need people to check people out. There's jobs being lost. I like to go in and shop and look and pick through and see what I'm going to do and make up my mind on what I want. Believe it or not, I like to shop. I go all the time and don't buy anything. I'm just going to look at stuff. Usually not the grocery store for that. That's usually a you know, sporting goods store. But anyway, I still like to go and look. Check that out right there. That is a very nice shave. And going and ordering your groceries and having somebody pick them for you and bring them out to your car and everything like that. I Man, that's just silly. Absolutely silly. I told her it was a pretty low-level rant, but still, it's just another symptom of the world going nuts. Idiotic. Self-checkouts. I go to the store sometimes early in the morning, and that's all they have open is the self-checkouts. And I tell them they can go put all my stuff back up. I'll just come back sometime when I can have someone check me out. I'm not getting them any cheaper for checking them out myself. I'm still paying for the person to be up there checking them out. They're just not having to actually do the work. They're not having to provide the customer service. I like customer service. I provide good customer service with the work I do. I expect other people to do the same. And all you young people want to go in and, uh, you know, in and out, go through, get, you care less whether you had customer service. You just want whatever little idiotic stuff you're buying is. And to go about your business. And that's just fine if that's what you want to do. I don't do it. Very, 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 very seldom will I hit the uh, self-checkout. So here's what we got. It's a really nice, super high-class shave. Really, it's even nice and smooth under here. Always got that little bit of roughness on the neck because I won't go against the grain and risk the irritation. It doesn't do any good. I can do it. I can get a BBS. Great. Lovely. It lasts about two hours. Why bother? And the answer to that is, don't bother. Get a high-class, damn fine shave. Roll down the road. Do it again next time. So the Walmart brand Keurig there with the French roast is not that bad. I wouldn't say it's that good. But it's definitely better than some and it is definitely drinkable. And it's cheaper. So the folks at work that like to drink coffee, I'll bring some French roast Walmart coffee for you. And you can enjoy your morning coffee also. That doesn't mean I'm not going to have, you know, my French market in my pocket and use it. Doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean I gotta drink it with you. Although if I did, it'd be just fine. So there we go. We're stinking mo' better. We got a nice smooth shave from a very nice old razor, the B1. Maybe I'll clean this one up and, you know, get it shine back up. It's still, it, it hasn't had a lot of plate loss. I can't see any plate loss on it as far as the silver goes. You see right there on the very bottom how the silver looks. And, uh, it shines up really nice. You have a great day wherever you are. I'm going to get ready and go to work. Uh, I got to work tonight because one of the supervisors got called for jury duty. And you never know how long he's going to be out for that. So anyway, we'll cover his shift till he gets back. He's a good guy. Anyway, uh, oh, little news for you. Uh, 007, Agent 007 is going to be out of town for a week. So we're going to have Teddy. Teddy ain't a puppy no more, if you remember Teddy. And uh, so we're going to have Teddy rampaging around here. So tomorrow... Before he gets here, I'm going to try to do a little teddy proofing around the place. And Because uh, when he was a puppy, he was bad enough. But I bet he can really tear some stuff up now. So that's going to be tomorrow's project. So we'll be seeing Teddy. We'll be sure that uh, we let everybody have a look at Teddy before it's all over with. Y'all take it easy. Have a great day. And remember, happy shaves to you. <laughs>